What is going on YouTube fitness family? We have a very special video for you. I'm going to be critiquing Dr. Mike Isratel. He did a video on me, very complimentary, so I appreciate that. But he told me, I messaged him, I said, Dr. Mike, I'm gonna do a video on you. And he said, let's go, no holds barred. So whatever I have to say, and he's been very transparent that sometimes when he pushes people in videos, he doesn't actually train exactly like that. He gave himself a 70% grade. So I'm gonna grade Dr. Mike. I think I'm gonna be very impressed because look at this guy. I mean, that's just like four foot 10, 240 pounds of just muscle right there. I mean, look at that. That's giving me kind of, it's giving me some feelings I don't wanna talk about right now. But anyway, also, if you guys don't know, Mike, he doesn't talk about it a lot, but if you guys have seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I don't know if you know this about him. He actually played Samwise in that movie and he disliked the way he looked so much that over the last 30 years since that movie, he's, he's taken uh, copious amounts of trim and lost his hair, lost basically his friends and his dignity, but he's put on so much muscle that we all know and love him as Dr. Mike Isratel. So without further ado, let us get into, let's just go to this top video here. He's looking so juicy. So nice. That face is just so creepy, though. <laughs> he, oh, man. He definitely could scare some children away, that's for sure. Look at these head muscles, too. They're definitely they're in the comments a lot, but I think it's definitely worth noting he's done some serious head hypertrophy over the years as well. Um, so let's see. Let's get into this. He's doing some chest right here. So let's start with these presses. 95 is extremely impressive. Really good drive. Um, oh, so he's doing a soft pause at the bottom, but he's, he's actually resting the dumbbell slightly on his chest, technically deloading. I don't know if he's trying to deload and then reload these. I would like to see him bring them f slightly farther out to the outside and actually kind of turn them towards his biceps. What that's going to allow him to do is get a huge stretch without actually touching and deloading that weight before, because as we know, the stretch position is extremely hypertrophic. So if you deload it in that stretch position, you're kind of losing some of that effect. Really good drive here, really pushing the chest towards the ceiling. The only other thing is he kind of collapses at the top. What I like to see is even through the top of the rep, pull, keeping those shoulders pulled down and back so we can keep the impetus in the chest throughout the rep. Overall, tremendous form, 95 is no joke. If he's probably doing lighter weights like me, like a little PAB that I am, then he'd probably be doing it a little slower. Also, my reps are psychopathically slow, so nobody really wants to do that shit at the end of the day. Oh, Dr. Mike, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, I mean, we're gonna have to run the clip of the way you made me do these, because it was fucked up. We worked out together, and he came to LA. And he said, Eric, we're going to do a set with 80 reps. And not only that, I'm going to make you get the slowest negative, the craziest stretch at the top. <laughs> but anyway, so he said, do not explode. Make that concentric quick. Be athletic. You said not to explode. Three. You can accelerate if you don't explode. <laughs> <laughs> this looks pretty fucking explosive to me, Mike. And I, I'm going to count these with a rep, the time of the rep. So that's a 1-1000, one, 2 one thousand. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. So these reps are about two seconds. The reps he was making it do are probably about eight seconds. And we all know that optimal rep time, depending on level, is anywhere between like two and eight seconds per rep. I would argue he's probably pushing these a little too fast. As you can see in the most contracted position at the bottom of the rep, he explodes, but he doesn't really get that peak contraction at the bottom before coming up. I could also, I would also say he could probably keep the elbows farther tucked back and drag the weight up his body on that eccentric and get even more stretch at the top. I think he's stopping about three inches short of where he could. So you get a little bit more when he comes up to the top, even if the elbow stays down, you could, he could probably stand to get a little bit more stretch to get the bar closer to his chin at the top. It's going to get more stretch through the tricep, long and short head, which is great exercise for both, mostly that short head, but we are getting losing a little bit on the top of the rep, especially in that stretch position. 
I think you would agree with me. He can comment below if he does or does not. Overall, really, really good form. I like how he's leaning over the weight in order to keep leverage. So what I mean by that is instead of staying completely upright, a lot of times what's going to happen is you're going to push a lot of the tension into your rear delt, especially at the bottom of the rep. Whereas if you can stay leverage over it and match that vector of force of the cable. So cable's coming from here, right? You want to match the angle of your upper body to where that cable is coming from to maximize tension in the triceps. So overall, really good work there. Um, just tempo and a little bit more range of the motion at the top and then a, better, a little better peak contraction. I think for me, triceps and quads benefit the most from the peak contraction at the bottom of the rep or the top of the rep. So I like an quad extension, getting a really good like one second hold to the top, triceps, same thing, getting a really good one second hold on peak contraction, I think is very important. All right, now we're gonna do some push-ups. Uh, one of my favorite movement patterns. Really good stretch here. You can see his like fibers in his chest, just like really, really going off at the bottom of the rep. Woo, that's nice, that's a big chest. It's a very, very big chest, my friends. And I don't know if that's, is that a Syracuse or dollar sign at the, I'm gonna have to ask him about that on the shoulder here. Um, but love the shirtless videos, Mike, keep them coming. We, it keeps us coming back every time. Honestly, a little bit better tempo on the eccentric. You see kind of gets to the top and then just immediately almost dunks it in. So I would like to see, this is like 95% form probably like a little bit more of a milk on the eccentric. I don't know if he's supersetting this with another exercise, in which case so understandable that these aren't a hundred percent instead of 95%. But if he's not, um, then I would say you probably slow down the eccentric a bit. I love how he has those, those pads positioned. Those do two things. One is maximizing range of motion, obviously, because you get to push the chest through the pads. The other way, thing I love about it is the placement. He's got them up higher, which is gonna really emphasize the upper chest as opposed to being lower here, which is gonna be more tricep and front delt uh, focus. So love this, especially for a chest focus. And that might be the end of the workout. And this man is 242 fucking pounds. I hope you guys realize like, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna have Phil, you can do this put a like clip of me standing next to uh, Mike and Jared in our training video. It's so impressive that he holds that much muscle at the height he is. I don't know exactly what height he is. I know I said 4'10", that was a joke. I think he's like closer to 5'7", five, 5'8", five, maybe. Um, but to have 240 pounds of pretty lean tissue at that body weight is a testament to how hard he trains. So I think that's one thing to note too is there is this big misconception that if you are training science-based training, that you're not training very hard, but that is not the truth. Like, I think it's actually much harder to train with really good form, slow eccentrics, and then build the load over time. So you can't hold this much muscle without training fucking hard as well as with good form. But as far as I know, he's very injury free as well. And I think that is a testament to the way he trains. So let's do another video here. We got some back pull-ups are usually a staple for him. So it looks like he's doing some weighted pull-ups, really, really good stretch at the bottom of the rep. He's got a pretty tight hand position. I think his take on hand positioning on pull-ups is kind of wherever it's comfortable for you. My sense is here, if he went a little wider, he would probably get a little lat engagement. I don't know if he's trying to do more mid back and he's kind of throwing it over at the top. So instead of kind of like pulling consciously and keeping the chest open, you see he's kind of collapsing at the top. It might just be he's kind of a little fatigued towards the end of the set. This might be his top set as well. And just as we know, like if you're training hard and you're pushing yourself and your form is pretty good, that's the most important thing. Like if you're getting pretty close to failure. So, I mean, I don't know what bias he's trying to utilize here, what, what kind of muscle groups he's really trying to target, but this is going to be a lot of lats in that stretch position, but as he kind of comes up instead of staying upright, once he comes here, now we're going to get a little bit probably into the mid back spinal rectors, even like traps and a little bit of rear delts by kind of rolling it over. Not a bad thing. It's just a matter of kind of like what he's trying to focus on in this movement pattern. More pull-ups here. I fucking hate pull-ups. So hats off to this guy for doing 242 pound 
body weight and weighted pull-ups. Yeah, same thing here, really good form. We're really smoking the eccentric and huge stretch at the bottom. That's the most important part of these movement patterns, especially for back, is just that eccentric load and then the stretch position. So tremendous job here on those. More pull-ups, and now we're gonna go to um, this assistant. And this is where I really like his form, like so nice. You can see his whole back just explode at the top of the rep because he has that assistant. And the assisted pull-ups is literally like probably top 10 movement pattern for me for back because it really feels like it allows me to keep the chest open and you can see how much lat emphasis he gets even at the top of the rep. To contrast against the, obviously the reps where he was doing them weighted, um, where he's kind of rolling forward, you see how open he stays throughout the course of the rep. Look at those hamstring and calves, just things of beauty. Tired of generic fitness plans that never get you results? Say goodbye to the guesswork with my one-on-one -on -one coaching. It offers personalized strategies for maximum results and sustainability. Ready to elevate your physique? Fill an application today. Link in the description. All right, finish out with what looks like some sort of rowing movement. Big stretch here, opens up, retracts the scaps. Really nice form here, a lot of weight obviously. Uh, these are really cool machines because it allows you to control the force curve where it's the heaviest. It looks like the bias for him is based on where he has this stacked is probably going to be in the stretch position. The only thing is it kind of limits your range of motion uh, just a hair, but I think this is a really cool apparatus. See all he almost pulls his chest off the pad to get peak contraction. Don't feel like if you're doing a pad assisted row that you have to stay like here. You can lift off slightly, especially on peak contraction. So you can retract the scaps a little bit better, get a bit, little better peak contraction. Let's do a leg day because, oh man, look at these hams. Woof. It's nice. So we're doing a belt squat here. And what you can see he's doing is not going all the way up at the top. And this is a very common technique, especially for bodybuilders, to keep tension on the muscle because when you, what's called stack the joint, when you go hip, knee, foot, completely straight up, you're essentially deloading your muscles and putting the tension straight through your bones and on your joints. So in this scenario, when he doesn't strain completely at the top, he's keeping tension on the quad specifically in this exercise movement pattern and slightly in the glutes, but that is going to help to obviously maximize hypertrophy uh, because of the fact that you're never taking tension off the muscle. So I'm a fan of this in most cases. Um, I, I like to take mine almost to full range of motion on most exercises. As you can see, I like on my leg press. I just don't sit at the top unless I want to do some sort of myo set where I am pausing and like taking like a 10 second breather and try to do like one or two more reps. Um, most of the time I'm just like getting to the top and then going right into my next rep. But this is a really tremendous way to keep tension. The other thing is he's really eccentrically loading. He's got a really, really good stretch through the glutes, through the quads. And a great thing about the belt squat is that you're not loading the spine, um, axial loading through your neck. And just the most, you, most of the time when you can minimize that as much as possible, unless you're a strength trainer and you need to, you know, train for a powerlifting competition. Obviously you gotta have to train squats, but if you're a bodybuilder, the most we can take the pressure off our spine, especially acutely, is gonna be tremendous for our longevity. So keep that in mind. If you have a belt squat or something like a pendulum squat, even though it is technically axial loaded, it's not quite as detrimental as let's say, you know, a barbell squat or a Smith machine squat. All right, now we're going into a hip hinge. Uh, looks like an RDL. Um, so we're going to be mainly um, hamstring focus here, a little bit of glutes as well. Um, he does a really good job of, as he goes down, pulling his butt back. It's just going to expose the hamstrings more, get a lot of stretch. Um, I really love the form here. I think he reaches super deep for it, gets a really good strike, eccentrically loads. Honestly, this is probably like my favorite form I've seen from Mike of all the exercises so far, just because of the way he just executes it perfectly. Um, only thing I would say is maybe there's a little spinal flexion at the bottom of the ramp where he rounds just a hair, but it's nothing egregious. Anyway, guys, I'm going to grade Dr. Mike Isratel. He's just goaded, so he just gets the goat grade. 
Um, super smart guy, literally. One thing that he does better than almost anybody is not only exercise selection, but he also, um, through his RP app, really helps people understand volume that you should be doing, deloading, uh, like, you know, lessening up your load for certain phases so you can continue to progress because most people just go to the gym with no kind of obviously structure. They just do the exercises they like. They just throw some weight on there. But Mike is very methodical and science-based and the way he trains and the way he scales his programming over time. So if you guys have not checked out his page, please do. It's probably one of the, my favorite, if not my favorite YouTube channels. Uh, he's extremely funny, way funnier than me. So go and check him out. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys like the insights. Mike, love you, brother. I hope that uh, I didn't hurt any feelings. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video.